So tonight, um, I thought it seemed good to talk about the blood. Absolutely. Amen. The blood, the blood of Jesus. And uh, I'm going to ask you guys, I've got lots of notes here, as I always do, but um, really all we want to come out is what God has in his heart, right? right. Yeah. And so will y'all believe with me for, for utterance, right? For utterance. Uh, and I'm sorry that I keep pulling on this. Utterance uh, that, the right, that the right part comes out. Aren't you glad that you can come to church and meet with the Lord and uh, get answers? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. So <clears throat> I'm just going to jump in here and, and see where we go. Life is in the blood. Do y'all believe that? Life is in the blood. Uh, I believe this, and I believe the word that we're going to look at tonight is going to prove uh, prove me out, prove us out tonight that anything that you're facing, anything that you're facing uh, in, your, in your spirit, in your mind, in your physical body, in your finances, in your relationships, anything that you're facing tonight, the good news that I have for you is that there is life in the blood for you tonight. Glory to God. All the blood of Jesus talks about is life, life, and more life. Hallelujah. Say, there's life for me in the blood. Amen. Amen. Leviticus 17 uh, says this. It says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And I'm going to try real hard to stay with my notes because you know I can jump off at any point here. <laughs> uh, especially when it comes to the blood of Jesus. I know when I plead the blood of Jesus and when I hold the blood of Jesus to any area of my life that the blood of Jesus, uh, it comes to bear and uh, does a work of life. Amen. Amen. I know I'm repeating myself, but I know there's life to be had. And I believe, I believe probably every single one of us, how many of you could use some life in some area of your life? Yes. 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 All right. Amen. Um, I do want to read a part of this. If you do not have this book, I'm going to tell you, you should get it. It's The Blood and the Glory by Billy Brim. You can go on Amazon uh, and get it. How many of you know that it's good to feed our spirit? It's good to feed our spirit man with the truth. Amen. More so than any TV we watch, than any sport we watch. And you know what? You may say, I get so tired of you talking about what we should do and what we shouldn't do. But there's life to be had and we're not going to receive, we're not going to be filled with the life of God watching sitcoms, playing games on our phone, or going to sporting events. So if we can invest in those kinds of things in our lives, how much more investing in the Word of God? Yes. Yes. Amen. And things that will feed us. Yes. Things that will feed us. Amen. So the blood and the glory, uh, Billy Brim. I've read this multiple times. I'm going to read it again. Um, <clears throat> the blood of Jesus was not an afterthought of the Creator taking, uh, taken in surprise at the fall of man. This is the statement. Oh, got it highlighted. Changed me. God never plays catch up with Satan. If he did, Satan could lead God. That's right. That's true. So, God never plays catch up. Aren't you glad? Yes. Before every need, any need ever showed up into, in your life, God already went ahead, prepared, and made the way for you. Amen. No, before God created man, he knew he would fall. Before God formed man, he foreordained his redemption with precious blood. Divine plans originate in the Father. Somewhere, are y'all listening fast? I'm going to go fast, okay? Somewhere in the divine council rooms of heaven, perhaps, the Father must have put forth his plan for man. Man would be spirit in God's image. 
on God's order and kind. Therefore, man would be able to fellowship uh, with God. Man would be able to love God. Man would be created to work with God, to have dominion over the works of God's hands. For such high purpose, eternal purpose, man could not be a robot. Spirit man would be given a soul, a mind, a will, and emotions. Fallen Lucifer would tempt man's will. Man would fall into the tempter's hands. But God would redeem man, say, but God. God would design man for redemption in his creation. God would make man a creature of blood. God's not restricted to create creatures of blood. Angels were not created with blood. Lucifer was not created with blood. God would put spirit man and his soul into a body of flesh made of the dust of the ground. The life of the flesh would be in the blood. Man's body, an earthen vessel, could be broken and the blood poured out, a life for a life. If a divine one would go to earth incarnate and live without sin in a body prepared, his vessel could be broken and his perfect life poured out in his blood for the remission of all sin. Do you know it was the man, the Lord Jesus Christ, that spilled his blood for us? God is not the one that had a problem with Lucifer. God just spoke the word and Lucifer was kicked out. It was man that had a problem with Satan. And it was a man that had to shed sinless, innocent blood to redeem man. Thank you, Jesus. In some eternal moment, in some heavenly place, the one we call Savior agreed to fulfill the Father's great plan of redemption. First in heaven and eventually at Calvary, our Lord Jesus offered himself through the eternal spirit without spot to God. The psalmist records Jesus' words in glorious contrast to the rebellious words of Lucifer. Then said I, lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, I delight to do thy will, O God. In what is a great mystery, God the Son became the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 20 says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. So it is super important that we have a before the foundation of the world faith. Amen. So man did not fall and then God think, oh, myself, what are we going to do? Right? God never plays that catch up with Satan. So in God's mind, when Jesus said, when the plan was set forth in heaven, that, that uh, Jesus would come incarnate to the world, to the earth, and shed his blood, Jesus said, I'll go. I will go. I will live in a body that was prepared, that is prepared, and I will shed my blood for all of mankind. Thank you for the blood, Lord. Thank you for the blood. So before the foundation of the world, so in God's mind, in God's mind, the lamb slain was a done deal before man was ever created. Amen. Amen. So to have a before the foundation of the world faith. All right, so just several points about the blood. Number one, we overcome by the blood. Amen. We overcome by the blood. Revelation 12, 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Amen. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. The NIV says they triumphed over him talking about the enemy by the blood of the lamb uh king james says they overcame the new living translation says and they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony the enemy has no answer for the blood is the blood of jesus important it, is, it not only is the cleansing agent in our lives, the, the, the agent that cleansed us so the Holy Spirit could recreate us, amen, at the new birth. 
Um, but the blood of Jesus, um, um, brings us victory, brings us victory in every area of our lives. Amen. So the enemy has no answer for the blood. And the more that we value, honor, and have faith in the blood, the more we overcome. Amen. It, it would, it would do us good to do a study on the blood of Jesus. It would do us so much good to do a study on the blood of Jesus. And tonight we're hitting, I don't know, minuscule, minuscule stuff on the blood. All right? The blood of Jesus has secured our redemption and the remission of sins. I want to, I want to hit this, but we're going to go fast, all right? Colossians 1, 12 through 14. Colossians 1, 12 through 14 says, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified and made us fit to share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints, God's holy people, in the light. <clears throat> the Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness. You know what? We need to stop and just meditate on that sentence right there. Because so many times as, God child, as God's children, we're acting like we haven't been delivered out of the kingdom of darkness. And that the kingdom of darkness has dominion over us. It says the Father's delivered us out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Amen. In whom we have redemption through His blood. Say, through His blood which means the forgiveness of our sins. So redemption, the purchase of one's freedom, freedom from bondage, freedom from slavery. We must know what we've been redeemed from. Again, if we don't know what we've been uh, redeemed from, then we cannot have faith to receive it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? If I don't know the word of God, I can't know the will of God. The curse or punishment. The curse is the punishment for breaking God's law. Okay? All right. And so the curse is threefold. Uh, it is spiritual death, sickness and disease, and poverty. That is the curse. That is the curse of the law, the punishment for breaking God's law. Our redemption is threefold. Praise the Lord. Our redemption is threefold, eternal life, health and healing, and prosperity. Amen. Amen. So we've been redeemed from sin and death, and we've been redeemed to righteousness and life. We've been redeemed from sickness and disease, and we've been redeemed to healing and divine health. Remember, he, he has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. He's translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. There's no curse. There's no sin. There's no death in the kingdom of God. Amen. He's delivered us from the kingdom of darkness, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Glory to God. So our redemption, uh, not only from sin and death, uh, from sickness and disease, but from lack and poverty, and he's he has redeemed us to prosperity and more than enough. See, y'all remember, y'all remember when uh, when I said I believe it was Mark Hankins that said this that when we hear the word of God, but we've heard it multiple times, uh, that it should thrill us every time that we hear it. And if it doesn't thrill us, then that just means it's not in us. It's not a reality to us yet. Amen. So all of this is just super good. I just spit. Super good news. We've been delivered from sin and death. We've been delivered from sickness and disease. We've been redeemed and delivered from poverty and lack and not enough. And it's by his blood. It's by his blood that he redeemed us. Glory to God. 
uh, let's talk in verse 14, if you don't care to put that uh, back up for me, in Colossians. There, in whom we have our redemption through his blood, which means the forgiveness of our sins. The forgiveness of our sins. It actually, uh, in, in the Greek, it actually is the word remission. Remission. Forgiveness is great, listen, and is a part of remission, but forgiveness was given in the Old Testament through animal sacrifices, right? When the blood, when the blood was applied. This side of the cross, the blood of Jesus is for the remission of sins, which means forgiveness, cancellation of penalty, and removal of guilt. Glory to God. Forgiveness of sins, the, the definition to forgive is to cease to feel resentment against an offender, to grant relief from payment of. Aren't you glad for the blood of Jesus? Amen. And then cancellation of penalty. What is the penalty of sin? Death. For the wages of sin is death, right? The cancellation of penalty is part of remission. Through, through his blood. And then the removal of guilt, Hebrews 10, 22. It says, having our hearts sprinkled and purified from a guilty conscience. So the blood of Jesus will come in and cleanse and purify even our conscience from all sin. And you say, well, I don't know. I, I haven't really been experiencing that. Well, now apply your faith. Apply your faith with the blood of Jesus. I apply the blood of Jesus to, to my mind and to my conscience. For the blood of Jesus purifies and cleanses me. Amen. Amen. All right. Atonement versus remission. In the Old Testament, when a person brought a sin offering, he had to bring an animal. Uh, a male one without blemish or defect from the flock or herd to the priest of the tabernacle gate. I'm going to try to just kind of read this in my notes so I can move on, but I did want to hit this. The priest would inspect the sacrifice to ensure that it was without blemish or defect. Notice that the priest inspected the sacrifice and not the one bringing the sacrifice. Glory to God. Same is true. When God judged sin that was laid upon Jesus, he did not inspect mankind because mankind was indeed full of sin. He inspected the sacrifice to carry away man's sin. Jesus had to be perfect and without blemish for his blood, for his blood to cleanse us. So there was only one man and there was only one blood that could be shed for all of mankind. And that was the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. Amen. The worshiper or the one coming to make a sin offering we're talking about in the, uh, in the Old Testament uh, would then lay his hands on the innocent animal identifying with the sacrifice. His sin and his guilt was being moved from him to the sacrifice. Leviticus, this is in Leviticus 1. Uh, he then lays his hand on the head of the burnt offering and it will be accepted on behalf to make atonement for him. In doing this, the worshiper is confessing his sins, acknowledging that he is a sinner. All right? So, so that's, part, that's part of how the... The, the priest and the blood sacrifices and all that was set up with the priesthood in the, in the Old Testament. Now, atonement, how many of you have heard the word atonement? Yep. Okay, atonement means covering. All right? Atonement means covering. So in the Old Testament, when <clears throat> the high priest would go in once a year and do a blood sacrifice for the nation of Israel... But throughout, even not once a year, but every day, the, the priest would do their priestly duties and worshipers would, would come in at all times bringing their own sacrifices, all right? For their sins to be covered, atonement means covered, meaning just like if you had a wagon that was full of dirt and then we put a cover over that wagon so the dirt could not be seen, the dirt was atoned or the dirt was covered. 
And that is what the sacrificial animals in the Old Testament, uh, that is what happened there. The sins were atoned for. They were covered. Say covered. All right. So, so the sin, I'm sorry. <coughs> so the sins were covered, but they were still there. The sins were covered, but they were still there. Jesus did not make atonement for our sins. Amen. This is good news, but Christians everywhere are living like their sins are still there. Like the blood of Jesus is no better than the sacrificial animals of the Old Testament that their sins are still there. But the Bible tells us that the blood of Jesus didn't cover our sins, but the blood of Jesus removed our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. Glory to God. That's Psalms 103, 12. Glory to God. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. 1 John 3, 5 says, You know that he appeared in visible form and became man to take away, take upon himself and to take away sins. And in him there is no sin. So Jesus came not to cover, but to take away. The sin problem has been dealt with by the Lord Jesus Christ and the shedding of his blood. Sin is not your problem. Glory to God. Glory to God because of the blood of Jesus. And uh, Satan is defeated. Sin has been dealt with by the Lord Jesus Christ. I've said this before. The greatest enemy of a Christian is an unrenewed mind. Amen. Amen. So uh, isn't it awesome uh, to come to church on Sunday and Wednesday and have devotions through the week that we're renewing our minds, right? That we can live like the new creature, the new... Boy, that was Southern, wasn't it? <laughs> Cre Whoa. It's shake and bake and I helped. That's kind of <laughs> what it sounded like in my head. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Um, okay. So under the new covenant, under the new covenant, after Jesus has shed his blood, our sins aren't uh, just covered and forgiven. They are gone. They're gone. They're gone. And I'll tell you, it, it, um, I believe it aggravates God. I believe it aggravates the Father when we have uh, repented of, of anything and we keep bringing it up to him. He doesn't know what you're talking about. And it bothers him that we would uh, make so little of what it costs the Lord Jesus uh, to do for us, which is to wash away that sin in our lives and in the mind of God the Father. So we make much of the blood. Amen. It's, a, it's an act of faith. The next time that you miss it and you blow it and you repent, it is an act of faith to pick yourself up and keep going like it didn't happen. Yeah. 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 Amen. It doesn't please God to walk around thinking that you have to uh, uh, do penance or, or pay for the blow up. That, that is, that's ridiculing what it cost heaven everything. To take care of for us. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, ba, 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 ba. All right. I'm going to read this very quickly and then we're going to. We're on page three and I have like seven pages. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't ever say my sins have been covered. The blood of Jesus Christ has taken your sins away. Some have said that the doctrine of justification is the teaching that because of Christ's finished work, our status can be described as just as if I'd never sinned. It's really more than that, but that's a good start. In the eyes of your heavenly Father, you have an unblemished record. He isn't overlooking anything. He's not going... I see it, but I'm just, you know, I'll just give it a wink, you know. That's not what he's doing. 
Uh, he isn't overlooking anything. He has rewritten your history by taking away the sins of your past and giving you the history of Christ himself. Wow. Glory to God. Glory, glory to God. Believing that your sins are under the blood of Christ doesn't truly honor the finished work of Jesus. Ironically enough, it actually diminishes his sacrifice what he did is much greater than most Christians have understood. He doesn't condemn us for our sins now because there are no sins to condemn. Wow. Glory to God. The cross has obliterated them. Yes. Because God is a just God, he will never judge the same sin twice. What does that mean? It means because God judged your sins and my sins on Jesus he will not require payment from us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, all right. Our approach to God is one way. This is going to be a two-parter. I'll just go ahead and say it right now. This, this will be a two-parter. Our approach to God is one way, and that is by the blood. Let's turn to Genesis we're going to look at the account of um, Cain and Abel. Genesis 4. We're going to start in verse 3. And in the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel... Abel... Abel brought of the firstborn of his flock and of the fat portions, and the Lord had respect and regard for Abel and for his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no respect or regard. So Cain was exceedingly angry and indignant, and he looked sad and depressed. And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why do you look sad and depressed and reject, dejected? If you do well, will you not be accepted? If you do well, if you do what's right, will you not be accepted? And if you do not well, sin crouches at your door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. I believe that there are a couple of different applications of this passage, but I deeply believe that this passage is talking about uh, how the two brothers approached God. And God had made it very, very, very clear. You know, when Adam and Eve sinned, blood had to be shed. He killed an animal and he shed, God killed an animal, shed innocent blood to clothe Adam and Eve after they had transgressed. Is that right? So no doubt that God had, had talked to Adam and Eve and had talked to Cain and Abel. It said in the course of time. So things had been going on for a while. No doubt God had talked to them about what was the proper way to approach him. Amen? Amen. And, and so it says here that Cain brought an offering uh, of the ground. Uh, Where does it say that? Yeah, verse 3. Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And so, so he, is, he is exhibiting here uh, this prideful attitude. And listen, when it comes to how we approach God, how we come to him, there's one way. We cannot be deceived that we can get to God any old way. Yeah. Amen. There is, there is one way. Amen. But, but Cain decided in his heart that I'm going to work real hard, I'm going to make my own way, and I'm going to bring God a token of my work and my effort and come to him that way. Yeah, and uh, what, a, what a dangerous, what a dangerous thing. But God said, why are you angry and why do you look sad and depressed and dejected if you will just do what is right, what you've been instructed to do, then you will be accepted. He had a chance right there to repent and to say, uh, Father, I, I, I repent. I repent of doing it my own way, of coming to you by any way other than by a blood sacrifice. 
Amen. Um, let's see here. Hebrews 11, 4 in the Amplified says, Prompted, actuated by faith, Abel brought God a better and more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, because of which it was testified of him that he was righteous, that he was upright and in right standing with God. There is only one thing that makes us righteous and in right standing with God, and that is the blood. That is the blood. And God bore witness by accepting and acknowledging his gifts. And though he died, yet through the incident, he is still speaking. In a a footnote of my Bible here in, in this passage, it says, In bringing the offering he did, Cain denied that he was a sinful creature under the sentence of divine condemnation. He insisted on approaching God on the ground of personal worthiness. Instead of accepting God's way, he offered God the fruits of the ground, and he presented the product of his own toil, the work of his own hands, and God refused to receive it. Amen. So there's one way. So there's one way, and that's the blood of Jesus. All right, And so we know that every, every sacrifice in the Old Testament was a type and shadow of the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world and that pointed to the day that the Lord Jesus Christ, I am spitting everywhere, that the Lord Jesus Christ would take upon himself the sins of the world. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Oh, there's so much good stuff. Let's go to Ephesians 2. I want to talk, and we'll just see maybe next week, talk about um, applying the blood. Ephesians 2. Twelve through fourteen says that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens in the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's a pretty hopeless place. Okay? But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace, which has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So we see that we were all in the world without without hope, no way, no way to be reconciled back to a holy God, but God, but God. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, which, which reconciled us, which washed away, which took the sins of the world upon him, washed them away forever, and put us in right relationship with the Father. Glory to, with a holy God, with a holy God. People who are full of sin don't stand before a holy God uncondemned, but we do. As his children. Amen. And so I'm talking about when we talk about applying the blood of Jesus, which is really, really what I wanted to get into tonight. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you just feel like you got to build a platform uh, before you get there. Uh, but about uh, applying the blood, and I have done this numerous times. Listen to me. Where relationships are concerned. And we've all had relationships. We've all, there have all, there, all of us have been confronted with uh, relationships in our lives where separation has happened. We could say with no hope, right? With, with no hope. But by applying the blood of Jesus, I'm telling you, God showed this to me, revealed it to me, made it real in my heart. If the blood of Jesus can wash my sins away and put me blameless before a holy God, can reconcile me to a holy God, 
By me holding the blood of Jesus over, over relationships, they can be reconciled. Not by our effort, not by our manipulation, but by the power of the blood of Jesus. And it's so true when we plead the blood, when we, and like I said, we're not going to get there tonight, but plead is a legal term. It's not begging. Plead is a legal term. Like when we're in a courtroom, what do you plead? How many remember the song, Just As I Am Without One Plea, But That Thy Blood Was Shed For Me? I, I, I need to see uh, some hands. In, oh, my dear Jesus. Just, just a few of us, huh? Don't make me sing it. <clears throat> no, I can't because even just thinking about it, I cry. I was nine years old when that song was sung in a Baptist church, and I walked down the aisle and gave my heart to the Lord, just thinking about it. And every time I hear it, it brings me to my knees. Just as I am, without one plea, I've got nothing to bring you, but that thy blood was shed for me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we need where relationships are concerned, get the blood on them. Get the blood and stay with it. Listen, we as God's people, we give up. You know, the life of faith, it's not a one and done. Do you hear me? It's not a one and done. We stay with it. It's every single day. Father, I thank you for your precious blood that brings life, that reconciles. And I apply the blood of Jesus to whatever, to whatever it is. And it could be a relationship. It could be a body part. It, it could be our finances. It could be whatever. Wherever death has manifested in your life, applying the blood of Jesus brings life on the scene. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. Father, I thank every single day. I thank you for the blood. I, I apply the blood of Jesus over my household, over my children, over my grandchildren. Father, I thank you for that life-giving blood. And, and, and I'm telling you, uh, there is no need to fear. Listen, in this day and hour, we're, we're about to see Jesus come. Glory to God. And, and things that are in the world and things that would vie for our attention. Uh, man, let's not put our sights there. Let, let's not be, be looking at that stuff. The blood of Jesus is able, I'm telling you, is able to keep your kids. I don't care what's going on in the world. I don't care the lunacy, the absolute lunacy of what Satan has unleashed upon the earth. The blood of Jesus can and will keep your children and your grandchildren if you'll hold the blood of Jesus over them. That's right. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm thrilled. I'm not scared for my kids. I'm not scared for my grandkids. Greater is he that's in them than he that is in the world. The same blood that saved them is the same blood that will keep them, preserve them all the days of their lives and bring him glory, cause them to run their race all the way to the finish line. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The precious blood of Jesus. All right. We're going to stop there, and we'll just look forward to part two, won't we? Stand with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your word uh, tonight. And I do apply the blood of Jesus over every heart, everyone listening, um, that the word of God would take root. Take root in the hearts of your people uh, and bring forth great fruit <laughs> in, in the name of Jesus. Father, I, I just thank you that, that through the, the teaching and the delivering of your word, that, that eyes, eyes are lifted, that countenances are, are lifted. And Father, that we are not just hearers of the word, but we say we're a doer. 
Hallelujah. That's right. We're doers. We're a doer of the word. Uh, so we so we take the divine deposit because we know that faith came tonight because faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word. So we know that faith came. And so we'll be an active doer of the word, Lord. And we will put into, into practice uh, and give action to the word that we heard. We magnify you, Father. We magnify you, Jesus, for the greatness of your blood. The greatness of your blood that delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. That causes sin and the effects of sin to no more have dominion over us. But you've translated us into the kingdom of your dear son. Where life, life, and more life reigns. Glory to God. So right now, I just ask you, whatever, whatever it may be in your life, uh, like I said, whether it be a relationship or, or a physical something in your body or, or finances or a concern about your children, I just want you to name it, to, to lift it up before the Lord right now and just put the life-giving blood of Jesus over it. Father, I thank you for it. I thank you for life right now. I thank you. We apply the blood of Jesus. And where, where, the, stain of, um, where, where the stain of the curse has had a place, we say no more, but that the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus makes everything right. Yes. What is wrong, the blood of Jesus makes right. So we hold the blood of Jesus over body parts that need to be quickened and made right in the name of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus over our children who are currently not serving the Lord. And we say the blood is enough. We, we apply the blood of Jesus over their hearts and over their minds. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that, that they are disciples that are taught of the Lord, obedient to your will. And great is their peace and their undisturbed composure. Father, where the curse has uh, had an effect on finances, we lay the blood of Jesus right there. And we thank you, Father, because of the blood, because you were made poor so that we could made, be made rich, that you shed your blood to remove the curse of poverty from us. We lay the blood on our finances, and we thank you for life. We thank you for life. We thank you for life right there in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we magnify you. We magnify you. We magnify you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. We don't bring our works to you. We don't bring anything to you. But just as the song says, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Oh, we thank you. We thank you for the blood that speaks. We thank you. The blood speaks a better word. I'm telling you, whatever it is that's been tormenting you, an effect of the curse, the blood speaks a better word. It's a word of life to you tonight. It's a word of life to you tonight. And if you will stay steadfast and if you will hold the life-giving blood of Jesus on that situation, you will see victory. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. <laughs> we thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, your blood. Your blood is working mightily. Your blood is working mightily. Glory to God. Your blood and your word. <laughs> working mightily in us. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for it. We magnify you. Thank you, Lord. 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 
Hallelujah. Well, did you receive anything tonight? Amen. Amen. Well, hey, God bless you guys and uh, our our uh, rest of our crew. The, our youth and leaders will be home on Friday, and then we'll see you Sunday.